Uh, my name is Stephen Shield. I'm the writer director of Mum and Dad, which is a brand new uh, British horror film that's coming out on uh, Boxing Day this year, December the 26th. It's uh, uh, brutal and perverse and uh, blackly comic film in some respects about a murderous family who live in a house at the end of an airport runway and um, bring people back to the house to uh, torture and kill. It's not actually inspired by Fred West. It, um, it's, it's one of those things where I started writing the story and obviously uh, you start writing a story that's about a, a, a murderous family, a sort of suburban family, and obviously that, yeah, Fred and Rose West are, are in your mind because it's in everybody's mind, that, that story, the kind of public consciousness. But it wasn't a kind of intentional thing to, to write a, let's do a kind of Fred and Rose West exploitation film. I mean, I knew that there would always be kind of uh, comparisons to that, but it wasn't anything that I kind of um, deliberately drew on. It wasn't, I didn't kind of, you know, I didn't kind of sit down and read a load of Fred and Rose West, you know, reports or anything. So, so I think there's a there's, there's an element of that in there, but it wasn't actually inspired by. I think the inspiration came from um, essentially wanting to do a really um, low budget horror film, um, but also a horror film like um, something that I would want to go and see. And I guess I've been watching a lot of. Um, quite sleazy sort of 70s stuff, um, including quite a lot of Pete Walker, so things like um, Frightmare and House of Whipcord um, kind of really sort of fed into the idea and um, uh, Mumsy Nanny, Sonny and Girly, you know, and, and you know, they're all kind of films about kind of, you know, fucked up families and parents and and I, it's kind of like an archetypal kind of horror story really, that idea of the, the fucked up family, you've got like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Hills of Eyes and things like that where you've got different kind of variations in an American sense but there hadn't really been a British version of that for years and so that kind of fed into it <clears throat> I had the title the title I kind of pretty much nicked from a kind of 1940s American exploitation film called Mom and Dad which wasn't a horror film but it was kind of a real kind of yeah so uh, but I thought that would be a great title for a horror film Mum and Dad you know um, there was a kind of Philip Larkin quote in my head about you know Mum and Dad they fuck you up so that <laughs> kind of worked and and then the, the, I grew up next to Heathrow Airport, so um, I was approached by kind of Film London to put in for this, for this microwave scheme, they, they funded it. And um, because it, it, it kind of needed to be London set, I kind of put the two things together really, the Heathrow Airport setting and the, and the messed up family, and, and it kind of all came from there really. It's almost like there's a whole kind of period of British cinema that's kind of been a bit kind of excised from the, from the from the kind of conventional kind of history books of cinema, really, because it's a bit too sleazy, a bit too grim, and and there's kind of um, those kind of horror films, and there's also you know it's an era where there are loads of kind of <coughs> quite grim sort of sex comedies star starring kind of um, you know stalwarts of British TV and cinema, and they were always quite sleazy and, and re really sort of. Um, you know, quite drab looking in a way in terms of like the, 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 the design of them. Um, but there's something quite fascinating in them as a kind of, sort of document of the time and also kind of, like I said, it, I think people, a lot of people tend to think of like uh, British horror and they, they always kind of hark back to Hammer and Amicus and those kind, those kind of people and they ignore a whole kind of stretch of British horror where, where it's, you know, it came out of more kind of like, um, you know, exploitation and sexploitation. Um, Roots, you know, so people like Pete Walker came from came, came from that side. So, um, and that kind of slight kind of uh, sleaziness, I guess, was something that, that I thought um, hadn't been around for a while, and something that I kind of like in that, you know, from that kind of era. The, the film cost so little money; it was only made for a hundred grand. And I, I just the one thing I did want it to be was polite. I didn't want to make a polite film at all. I wanted to make something that that you know would not. It's not that I wanted to, you know intentionally cause offence or anything, but I didn't, I didn't want to have those kind of restrictions of thinking, oh no, I must kind of tone that down, so I pretty much went for it with the script and with the, you know, with the making of it.
I, I suppose I always say that I don't think that there's anything that you can't show, but I think you, you, you as a filmmaker have a kind of idea about, you know, you have to ask yourself, why do I want to show that and what am I saying to an audience with it? Yeah, so I don't think there's, there's, there's subject matter or an image that you cannot show, but I just think you, 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 know, you as a filmmaker think, well, yeah, do I need to show this? Why am I showing it? What effect do I want it to produce? And also, what kind of, what's the sort of, I guess, you yeah, know, the, the, the worldview or the politics that, that are coming through that? You know, if I show this, what effect will it have on an audience and what will it make an audience think? So, so I think that always comes into it. So I think you can, I don't think you, sh I think you kind of self censor yourself anyway in terms of what you would want to see. But like I said, I think there's ways of doing pretty much anything on screen, and there should be. I don't think there should be that kind. Of, I think you know it should be pretty um, uncensored what kind of goes out there. On December the 26th, we're doing an all-platform release, the first all-platform release, which is going to be a theatrical, pay-per-view TV, and DVD all on the same day, which will be the first time that that's happened. Um, it's it's a bit of a kind of test case. It's a bit. It's been slightly kind of controversial with. with with some people because they don't want to see that window closed, you know, uh, between cinema and, and, and DVD. Um, but I think with Revolver, they're, they're, they're looking at this kind of film and thinking, right, the, the main sales of this film, this kind of film, are going to be on DVD and they want to well, they want to offer the maximum amount of choice so that people who would normally buy it on DVD have the choice to go and see it on cinema, have the choice to see it on pay-per-view TV. Um, they're not suggesting that it's a kind of it's a model for all cinema. It's not going to happen with Quantum of Solace or, or you know the next Batman film. But for, for a film at this at, at this scale and in this genre, I think they feel that it's a you know it's a it's a good way of, um, of um, offering the audience choice. But also, I mean, it means that there's one kind of um, big push for the film really, which is all based around around Boxing Day.